Tenemos el gusto de tener con nosotros al profesor Kanza. El profesor Kanza, la presentación del doc, profesor Kanza la va a hacer, tenemos el gusto de que la haga el doctor Pedro González Casanova. ¿Cómo no? Well, we have the pleasure of having Professor Edward Kansas here. It's very well known that one of the most important methods in radial basis function, asymmetric method, is the collocation, asymmetric collocation method done by Professor Kansas. I will very briefly say it was uh, his achievements. His 92 publications over 3,300 uh, citations in the open literature international keynote speaker on uh, 87 different institutions and conferences, invented a mesh-free, rapidly converging method to the solution of the governing equation in strong and weak form that avoids the use of expensive mesh generations. In, two, in 2015, recipient George Green Medal at the International Conference on Boundary Elements. Activities, evaluate research proposal by the National Science Foundation and foreigner government equivalents. Frequently review of pre-referees journals articles, supervise 10 PhD candidates who graduated successfully. Two, we're more than pleased to have you here. Welcome to Mexico. Okay, muchas gracias. Okay, okay I, I'm going to be talking about radial basis functions and some achievements and new challenges. Uh, oh, come on. <laughs> Okay, um, when we're talking about uh, doing things on a computer, we need to know the difference between ideal and discrete mathematics. Uh, this is almost similar to the idea that Plato had about uh, the ideas in the sunlight and the, idea, the shadows in the cave. So discrete mathematics is going to be shadows in the cave. You're supposed to decide, decide what's going on. Oh, come on. This Maybe I... Here, here, here. Okay, nope. Down. Okay, <laughs> okay. I got it, I got it. Okay, I got it. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. All right. So, um, one of the methods that have been used are dependent on ancient electronic computers. They were very slow and had limited memory. So, people used uh, compactly supported uh, smooth polynomials and uh, derivatives of these polynomials of higher order are very unreliable and the truncation errors are significant, and these change physics. So for instance, if you have the axis where the data points are, and you want to t use a higher order polynomial, uh, you take your derivative of this higher order polynomial, you're getting uh, a lot of what is called polynomial snaking, and these derivatives that you use in finite difference and finite elements are very unreliable. Next step up are cubic and quintic splines. They're compactly supported. What's nice about these is that the function and the low order der uh, derivatives are continuous across the stencil boundaries. And <clears throat> because they're continuous, you have better physics. The disadvantage is the equations are coupled. Uh, some people are afraid of that. I don't know why. Uh, the complaint, uh, ill conditioning, ill conditioning. Okay, now, oops. Um, the next, next ones are wavelets, and these are complexly supported splines. 
these are orthonormal. They possess translational, rotational, and uh, dilational uh, invariants. And just by various shifts and so on, you can uh, uh, hack, uh, decompose complex signals uh, in, with a relatively few terms and with high accuracy. So, for instance, that is what a lot, how a lot of uh, signals, uh, uh, voice signals and um, visual signals are transmitted. Okay. The physics inherent in PDEs are modified to suit the uh, finite difference, finite element, finite volume methods. Uh, these require stabilizing numerical diffusion. So that's uh, equivalent of having a shock wave and having it uh, like molasses in uh, Antarctica or Siberia in the winter. They have wave dispersion, changing physics. Uh, and flows that are skewed to the mesh grids are in, uh, uh, incorrectly uh, calculated. And the most important thing is, although the professors like to show that delta x delta y goes to zero, that you record, uh, recover your partial differential equations, the important fact is they never go to zero on real computers. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, modern computer word sizes uh, are uh, the the largest uh, integer that can be processed in a, sin in a single uh, instruction. So modern processors have 8, 16, 24, 32, or 64 bits. So depending on the size of the word bit, the size, you know, how many bits there are, this gives you the idea of what kind of precision you have in your computations. Uh, oh, I forgot. Okay, I'm not. Uh, spectral methods are globally supported uh, C infinity functions. Uh, uh, some of these functions are typically 1D orthogonal uh, functions. Bessel functions, Chebyshev, Laguerre, Hamid, polynomials. And they require tensor product grids. So unlike uh, compact exported functions, uh, these have exponential convergence. So what I'm going to be talking about is going beyond uh, tensor product grids into something more powerful that we can still have exponential convergence. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about meshless spectral methods. Uh, the mesh free C infinity radial basis functions are <coughs> um, basically univariate transcendental functions. Transcendental means they're going to be something like uh, the Gaussians. Uh, exponential functions, or uh, the multi-quadric, so square root of one half, various powers of that. That is uh, uh, a transcendental function. There are Bessel functions, etc., that are uh, sync functions that are uh, uh, tr transcendental like this. And these are basically uh, exponentially convergent pre-wavelets. That's why these are these work so well because they are exponentially convergent and they're pre-wavelets. The pre, uh, you have that uh, translation uh, uh, that y, uh, um, y sub j is the translational invariance. The c sub j squared is the uh, dilation. Uh, that, that basically lets you expand and contract it like a, a, a regular wavelet. And <clears throat> these are also rotationally invariant. So uh, the function, uh, you have two things that influence the shape of the wavelet. It's the 
the shape parameter c sub uh, c square sub j and also the exponential beta. Uh, the theoretical uh, spectral convergence of these has been uh, shown by Modich in 1992. It just shows that the uh, interpolation converges as basically a constant lambda, which is less than one, uh, raised to the shape average shape shape parameter over the H, which is the uh, field distance, or your uh, other people who call it like delta X, delta Y, and so on. <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> higher order differentiations uh, lessens the convergence, the integration uh, uh, raises the convergence rate. But these are extremely powerful because they add this exponential convergence rate. So the, for instance, the strong form of the C infinity radial basis functions is extremely simple to implement. The basic idea is that any uh, I messed it up. I'm going to ask somebody to <laughs> tweak it. Okay. Tell me where you want to. I'll tell you something. Okay. Okay, back a little more. Anyway, I just asked you to forward it. Forward? Uh, wait, one, go back a little more. Back. Well, okay. Uh, move back some more. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, one more forward. Okay. What I want to show you is that basically any dependent variable u of x and t is of the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, well, I'll ask you, yeah. <laughs> okay. Space is going to be, the spatial part is going to be with the radial basis function. The time part is going to be with the uh, expansion coefficient alpha. And you just plug this into the differential equation over the interior and on the boundary conditions. You can have Dirichlet, uh, Neumann, Robin boundary conditions. <coughs> you can't have all four, uh, well, for instance, with a two-dimensional problem, you can't have all four uh, boundary conditions being a Neumann. The two must be Dirichlet and at least two must be uh, uh, Neumann. So anyway, you can <coughs> you have uh, n sub i over the interior, n sub b over the boundary. So n i plus n b equals the total number of equations. You have n equations and none unknowns. Would you forward? Okay. <coughs> Pardon. Yes, inside the domain. I split the domain in the interior part, then on the boundary. So you have <coughs> you, you, you have boundary conditions, and they're discretized at n sub b points. The interior is at n sub i points. So you, you have the sum of the two, n i and n b, equals the total number n. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, yeah. <coughs> So the, the idea here is that we want to have <coughs> the best accuracy with the least amount of CPU time. So we want this ratio mu to be C over H to go to infinity because we want to have lambda, which is less than 1, raised to 
maybe infinity power. <coughs> so in the age scheme, um, we refined a spatial gridding and keep C fixed. Well, that makes the uh, system equations get bigger and bigger. And if we use the C scheme, keeping a small number of interior points, uh, but raising the um, shape parameter, this is going to be most efficient, but uh, it leads to ill-conditioned equations. What's the next one. So uh, I also want to say these C infinity or uh, PDEs are useful for um, elliptic, hyperbolic, parabolic PDEs, as well as integral and integral differential equations. You get high convergence rate. You can have coarse discretization, no meshing. And uh, there's um, <clears throat> a lot of papers uh, that have fuzzy, uh, fuzzy mathematics, ill-posed Ill problems, I'll uh, say, like the inverse problem where you want to find, uh, you, you don't know what the boundary conditions are, and you work backward from experimental data. Uh, you have people solving shock equations, uh, molecular quantum mechanics, black hole collisions, whatever you want. Just look in the literature. So there's a lot of papers. Next, please. Okay, yeah, okay. And these are very um, uh, useful for uh, ND hyperbolic uh, PDEs. So you can have um, local rotations and translations of hyperbolic PDEs to transform them into exact differentials. <coughs> Basically, you can add and subtract to, say, the Navier-Stokes equations. And uh, with uh, this little trick, you, at each point, you can make that messy Navier-Stokes equation look like an exact partial differential equation. And because you can separate time and space, the exponential, uh, the uh, um, uh, exp expansion coefficient, will have an exponential matrix uh, solution, which is exact. So you don't need to uh, be uh, happy just with second or first order, second order time differencing. You can have exact. And I've had um, <coughs> uh, solutions of this for um, rarefaction wave, shock waves, um, uh, two-dimensional um, flame fronts, in, in viscid flame fronts, in uh, vortical flows, etc. Next, please. Um, so this is basically the idea. Uh, I'm just taking some um, uh, ordinary diff um, partial differential equation like the Navier-Stokes and this moving translated coordinate system. And it looks like uh, basically an exact differential equation. And you can look this up. Uh, the solution is an exponential matrix um, solution. Next, please. OK. I want to point out that some people have been scared by radial basis functions because some lazy professors uh, and people who do stuff like this are uh, basically don't use their intelligence to look for uh, how to get around this ill conditioning thing. I'm sorry I'm that mean to them, but I, it's important to tell people that don't always listen to professors. <laughs> Use your, I mean, you're supposed to go to school to learn how to think and not just repeat what the professors say. Sorry. <laughs> I've been a professor too, so I'm pr practicing, trying to practice what I preach. Next, please. OK. Now. Here is the various, uh, I said before what the various uh, precisions are. So half, uh, half of uh, precision is uh, 12 digits of accuracy. And <clears throat> uh, the maximum um, 
a condition number that uh, the theoretical maximum uh, uh, condition number is 1 over the machine epsilon. So half a precision is basically uh, 2,500. Now you go to uh, single precision, <coughs> which has 24 bits, and its maximum precision uh, condition number is 8.5 times 10 to the sixth. Go to double precision, the maximum condition number is 4.5 times 10 to the 15th. Quadruple precision, you go 9 times uh, 4 times 10 to the 18th. If you have like a, 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 let's see, a quadruple precision, uh, 5.1 times 10 to the 33. And uh, there's new software out that lets you go about this. Uh, people who make computer chips are basically th interested only in uh, making uh, Androids, iPads, etc., like this, toys, rather than uh, real number crunching computers. So we need to go through a software uh, route way about, and I will be talking about a guy in Japan who's uh, uh, really made some breakthroughs on this. Next slide, please. So, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, if we look at the condition number of a matrix and the number of valid di digits, uh, we can see that it's basically K uh, log uh, machine precision uh, times the uh, condition number. So if uh, K is less than 1, <coughs> basically uh, K is 0 that you have 0. Um, digits of uh, accuracy, and uh, you can't tell the difference if it is computationally or mathematically singular. It's, you, you cannot tell from uh, from that alone. Now, if it's less, if it's greater than one, then you at least have k digits of precision. Next slide, please. <coughs> Now, sparse uh, radio basis function methods uh, have been proposed, like compact supported radio basis functions and um, radio basis functions of finite different schemes. So, uh, the, these are basically going to give you systems with large numbers of, uh, and are impractical. You can't. Uh, stick them on any computer, even with uh, extended precision, maybe 100 uh, digits of accuracy, you're still going to run into problems. So these are basically uh, people trying uh, ways around some of the cell conditioning. So you know, I, what you're doing it with complex support radio basis functions and uh, RBF finite difference schemes is you're exchanging um, spectral convergence for matrix sparsity and only algebraic convergence. Uh, so is the question is spectral convergence impossible to uh, have for large n? Next slide. So the way around this is to use domain decomposition. Domain decomposition is one of the oldest forms of preconditioning. Next slide. <coughs> so again, a large, a large full system is unpractical. Uh, there are DD, domain decomposition is like a preconditioner, and uh, it has a long history with compactly supported finite elements. And a lot of the, the work uh, done like this, say, by um, Borsch, Smith, Borstop, and Grop were on um, finite elements methods. And uh, the work is uh, basically you want to be able to partition the work into many uh, processes that can be performed simultaneously. 
next slide. <clears throat> so even though uh, C infinity RBFs are global, Roland Hardy, uh, who invented this method, the, he was the first to use uh, these uh, C infinity radial basis functions. Uh, he, uh, he just uh, truncated the uh, expansions for domain decomposition. He took a big picture of Abraham Lincoln, which had 266 pixels, and just processed four by four of them. And he came up with a very good uh, likeness of uh, Abraham Lincoln. That's practically uh, um, identical to regular photographs of them. So the idea here is that <coughs> you uh, domain decomposition reduces the absolute condition number in each subdomain. And if you raise the ex um, uh, shape parameter in each subdomain, you're going to accelerate the convergence rate. So the idea is to be put these together to get to minimize, to minimize the total processing time. Next. So domain decomposition is a uh, uh, divide and conquer uh, method. And like I said before, it was first used by, uh, I mean, made pro uh, famous by Grop for finite elements. And you can have <coughs> either overlapping or non-overlapping subdomains. And you can paralyze them. Um, uh, this was uh, pointed um, uh, by Mark Ingberg for a three-dimensional um, time-dependent um, thermal conduction uh, problem in 3D. And uh, the thing is, there's new multi-product, uh, multi-precision software uh, by Advanpix that is very fast and it is optimized for um, parallel processors. Next. So uh, these C infinity radial basis functions are uh, global in evaluation and data fitting. Uh, oh, we went this already. Right. Okay. These are out of line. Okay. Uh, somehow these slides are out of line. I said he broke the rules of domain decomposition and he got very good results here. I don't know why that happened. <laughs> Sorry. Next slide. Okay. So uh, I did a um, four dimensional time dependent Burgers equation. It's a hyperbolic equation. I had 16 overlapping subdomains, and it's in Kansen uh, Geyser in two, uh, 2013. So the uh, solution is faster because you are taking basically a smaller size n. Uh, the number of operations for these matrices are basically on n cubed operations. So if you make n uh, smaller, you're going to get uh, much faster uh, solution times and high accuracy. Next, please. So uh, there's a, now a comparison of double and extended precision. Next slide. Okay. <clears throat> There are a lot of reasons for the loss of accuracy uh, at boundaries. Uh, first of all, uh, <coughs> differentiation at boundaries like Neumann condition reduces the convergence rate. And uh, there are several tricks you can use. You can put some uh, points <coughs> slightly outside the domain and that uh, so you can cross the domain with the boundary condition, and that helps a lot. <coughs> you can use 
um, for the boundaries, higher uh, increase the uh, shape parameter at the boundary conditions. That makes it tighter. The solution is much tighter, and it gets uh, uh, very rapid convergence. So basically, you need to think of this is when you're solving, say, partial differential equations, you have the interior, you have Dirichlet, Neumann, say, del squared operators, and these all work on different time scales. Next, please. Now, the C scheme, that's this, where you increase the shape parameter, has the advantage, is that you can have um, 100 to 1,000 times uh, less resolution and still have the accuracy. The, the uh, equation system becomes very poorly conditioned. So that's why you need to use multi-precision arithmetic <coughs> if the system is non-singular. I'm proposing that <coughs> if you do the curve problem correctly, the singular, this uh, system is mathematically non-singular. Now, multi-precision makes this uh, C scheme very attractive uh, and very fast. Next, please. So Wong, Alex Chang, and so on published a paper <coughs> recently, excuse me, and they compared double and quadratic um, precision of the times on, uh, with the C and H schemes. So for a fixed C and H, uh, the quadratic scheme uh, is uh, 40 times, uh, takes 40 times longer than a double precision. And you say, well, that's the answer. You don't want to use double pre uh, quadruple precision. However, the main thing is when you're doing calculations, what is the total cost? Not the cost per operation, but the cost of everything together. So the cost of everything together with the C scheme we're using quadruple precision is 1 over 565, that of the double precision scheme. So just to... Some people are basically having, are like uh, horses with blinders, that they only see one thing, they don't look all around. You can't just say uh, if uh, quadruple precision is 40 times uh, longer, then it's no good. But what's the total cost? That's the main thing you need to worry about. The co it's the total cost of everything. Next, please. So, um, again, Wang, Li, and Cheng uh, looked at uh, finite elements and finite difference and uh, multi-quadric radial basis function. And they assumed with initial guess they want to have an accuracy of 1%. So, using uh, a quadratic element scheme, uh, or central differencing, the estimated error is h squared. But to reach an accuracy of 10 to the minus 16, h needs to be increased 10 to the 7 fold. Now, in three dimensions, that's 10 to the 21 power. Next slide. So the efficiency of the meshless uh, multi-quadric radial basis function versus these long established uh, uh, schemes uh, it, it must be questioned as are they really that efficient. So the, basically the bottom line is exponential convergent wins over uh, the time that uh, you have with traditional finite elements, finite difference, and finite volume. I mean, that is counterintuitive, but again, what's the total cost to get the answer that you wish to the de desired accuracy? Next, please. So arbitrary precision 
This is from advancedpicks.com. And so this is going to be a two-dimensional Poisson equation and using multi-quadric with various uh, degrees of precision. Next, please. So um, arbitrary precision in MATLAB uh, is better because uh, the transcendental functions are correct to m digits of accuracy, and it's going to be faster than MATLAB's uh, variable precision arithmetic or Mathematica uh, and <clears throat> David Bailey's uh, work that he did at Lawrence Berkeley. Next. It's basically how you program this to get the best accuracy. So uh, you have constant discretization points. Uh, so the, uh, the finest discretization is at the boundary, minus 1, 1. And uh, <coughs> you have uh, the largest exponential uh, shape parameter with exponential distribution at the, at the one one where you have this Poisson problem. Next, please. So these are uh, plots of the uh, solutions. This is um, the dotted lines are the standard double precision that people usually get now. So that is, uh, look at the errors here. These are on order 10 to the minus 5 with um, <clears throat> uh, quadruple precision. It's down now to 10 to the minus 14. <clears throat> and with 100 digits of accuracy, the answer is down 10 to the minus, say, 24. Next slide. Oh, and this is the, um, the shape parameter. Epsilon is 1 over the uh, uh, C. That's a convenient way of uh, predicting it. So this is equivalent for an extremely large uh, shape parameter with 100 digits. And also, the right-hand side shows the uh, condition numbers. So we're getting up condition numbers up to 10 to the 24. Okay, next slide, please. So now increasing the number of discretization points, <coughs> notice that the 100-digit is way down here. <coughs> this is down to maybe 10 to the 30th. <clears throat> and the condition number here is about 10 to the 23. So again, uh, increasing the precision uh, helps considerably. And this is the, uh, the idea that we'd like to have combining, say, with um, Boltzmann's equations, which has six dimensions, focal points of six dimension, is to combine radial basis functions with extended precision, maybe 100 digits, and domain decomposition. Next slide, please. So uh, anyway, we had two things in here, x and, and the y's. The x are the... Uh, um, evaluation points and the Y's are the data centers. And basically you want to minimize uh, the number of points uh, that you need. So you only want to have points in high gradient regions. You can tell what, what to do by looking at the forcing functions on the boundary and uh, on the interior. And you can use multi-level local uh, refinement. Uh, you can basically use a lot of the tricks that have been used in uh, finite elements and finite difference schemes. And it's been uh, there's literature has a lot of this already. Um, so basically, you want to refine 
locally when in order to reduce the overall residual error. Next, please. <coughs> These radial basis functions can be used in its true global form for large problems. Uh, uh, so the compact supported ones only have polynomial convergence. Domain decomposition uh, it seems to have a convergence rate of seven or better. Uh, this is not, this is still needs to be explored, especially with multi-precision. And um, you get the best performance with the least amount of effort with this. Next, please. The shape parameter can be, uh, again, influenced by the shape, um, the, what the shape of the radial basis function, the multi-quadric, is influenced by the c squared or the beta, the exponent. So you want to have it flat at the, near the data center and rising rapidly at the edge. And this gives the effect of increasing the uh, convergence rate. Next, please. The weak formulation uh, is also another way that we can use this. It's to minimize, uh, uh, basically, um, you integrate this uh, schema sort of like a finite element approach. And <coughs> you want to minimize the, uh, the overall residual error. Next, please. So <coughs> this was introduced by uh, Gallopin and Zhang in 1992. <clears throat> they just basically took two integrals over the interior and the boundary and uh, integrated the basis function and and set uh, and said that they want to look for solutions that are less than eta and eta is some prescribed tolerance so just by varying uh, these uh, <clears throat> Uh, quantities, you want to find the best solution that gets eta, uh, the solution of this integral smaller than eta. So uh, the problem is that global optimization can take a lot of time because uh, doing 4n free parameters is very difficult and slow conversion. Next, please. So one way around this is to say I'm going to just say pick the shape parameter and uh, solve a set of linear equations and then plug that back into the uh, minimization thing um, and look for those answers that uh, get, have the best uh, uh, solutions. Next, please. So the local... <coughs> So basically, you use local uh, integration in core uh, 1D, uh, core is nu numerical integration. It's very time consuming. Uh, the strong form uh, is consistently uh, uh, better than the weak form, and uh, many parameters uh, are needed for global optimization. Next, please. I should show. Uh, the stopping criteria is whenever um, psi, capital Psi is less than eta. <clears throat> and ill posed problems with fuzziness can be solved with this approach by the integral approach. <clears throat> and the solution can even be uh, singular, but you're integrating through there. Next, please. So the integration is performed at the endpoints, you don't need to do a tessellation like you do in finite elements. You just integrate over the endpoints. And by freezing uh, x, y, and c squared and, and find the alpha from uh, simultaneous equations, this uh, helps you find, look for, search for the deepest minimum. Next, please. And uh, did a nearly singular 2D Poisson equation, uh, and 
the stopping criteria is where the maximum error is less than uh, uh, eta. And the exact solution is an exponential, so it rises very rapidly at 1, 1. Next, please. <clears throat> so uh, these are the boundary conditions at the uh, – I have two Dirichlet conditions and two Neumann conditions at the endpoints. Next, please. And uh, again, just uh, varied this until uh, the uh, the total error is less than uh, prescribed eta. Next, please. So, well, we're going back. Okay, let's skip this. We did this already. Oh yeah, and um, I use uh, the multi-precision uh, routine on here to avoid ill conditioning, and you can see what the results are. Next, please. So uh, this is the table uh, with the uh, um, results for the the strong form and the weak form. So. Here the table shows that the answers are ranging, um, oh, 10 to the minus 24, 10 to the minus 25. But the weak form that helps you find an, the global minimum is 0 0.0003 or 0 0.002. So you can't just look at the strong form uh, of the answers to determine whether or not you have the best global minimum. So uh, here it's 3 times 10 to the minus 24 is 0 0.002, where something like this, 10 to the minus 25, is an order degree uh, larger. Next, please. So the uh, basically the weak form uh, landscape is extremely con uh, complex. You have a lot of uh, local maximum minimum valleys and um, basically you need to do a good search. I don't think there is a good um, uh, search algorithm yet for uh, multi-dimensional uh, optimization. Um, but it does help to get uh, multi-precision in here to get fast convergence. And next slide, getting close to the end. Is that it? Okay, challenges. Um, Multidimensional PDEs, IEs and PDEs, and we need to overcome the curse of dimensionality. Next. So, um, need to develop fast, efficient uh, methods for uh, multidimensional PDEs, uh, curse of dimensionality. What's the various, but what's the best ways? I th think it's going to be the C infinity radial basis functions that you have super spectral convergence, and you need to be able to uh, use domain decomposition and arbitrary position uh, per precision to minimize the total number of discretization points, even and even though you use higher precision. If you minimize the total number of points, you're still getting faster results. Next. And uh, last thing is um, good uh, stochastic global uh, optimization algorithms. Uh, stochastic uh, algorithms like the genetic, <coughs> uh, simulate annealing, the genetic algorithm. Uh, basically, uh, find the least, uh, the nearest local minimum, and you need some kind of an arbitrary kickstart to find another uh, to make sure you're not stuck in a local minimum. Systematic searches and interval methods may be better, but again, they're very slow. This this is some uh, area in which. Uh, <coughs> You graduate students and PhD students ought to be thinking about of um, there's a lot of applications for these uh, algorithms, uh, fast search algorithms.
think that's it.